Yes, I do work for the government. I, I said this many times. Why are they finding the need to go to Faris? Is he an authority? What connections does he have to the government? Just imagine the people back in the day when they would have to travel certain distances for months or even years. What is one thing that they would carry with them? The Quran. Why? Because they did not have it on their mobile devices or their gadgets. Brothers and sisters, imagine you have a app, the Qurani app, which not only shows you how much rewards you get, but reminds you to read the Quran, gives you reminders. Download the Qurani app now and let it testify for you on your Qiyamah that you read it wherever you was. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Hope you guys are inshallah. Now in this video, brothers and sisters, there are certain things that we need to understand. Piers Morgan and Faris Hamadi, what do they both have in common? Well, some stuff and some not. For example, one is the outright disbeliever. One, you can even categorize as an enemy of Islam. Yes, which is Piers Morgan. Yeah, uh, for those who might get confused. Like, why would somebody who has belief and iman, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells in the Quran that you should be soft towards the believers and harsh towards the disbelievers, but you see the total opposite of an individual, you have to ask a question. Why do they behave in this manner? Now, there are some couple of things which we need to have into context, brothers and sisters, yeah? And Daniel Hakikachu has even, I think, written some of us an article on this matter that some of them, I'm not saying all, are government agents. There are spies. Not only that, uh, Sheikh Asim al-Hakim has even spoken about that, that the CIA, they have some connections with the CIA. They are known for this. The super, super Salafis. I'm not putting, I myself, deem myself as a Salafi, but I'm not talking everyone, I'm not putting everyone in that category. I'm talking about the specific group, who Faris, Sadi, Shamsi, uh, even Sajid, yes, they all fit into those category. You work for the government, don't lie. If you do, it's okay. How would I lie? And thank you, I felt kind of unsafe. Thank you for saying it's okay. Yes, I do work for the government. I, I said this many times. I work for Irada Center for Rehab and Treatment. It's a treatment center that is funded by the government to help out drug addicts and alcohol addicts to recover. Uh, I'm not in the medical team. I work with policies and procedures and KPIs. This is what I do. This is how I work for the government. And part time, I work in Islamic Information Center, where we, where we help out new Muslims and reverts uh, to understand Islam better. If you think that I'm like an evil agent that's trying to implement and spread an evil government agenda against Muslims in Islam, no, I'm not that. My contents there, I don't like this is a very silly conspiracy theory and an accusation. And here are some things I'm going to show you which are going to find disturbing. Now, this is from the year. 2014 brothers and sisters yeah now let's look at this very closely in 2014 Faris Hamadi wrote the following 17 journalists gunned down by Israel in Gaza outcry about freedom of speech where is freedom of speech now interesting that doesn't sound like Faris but that was in 2014 Israel is a gangster a terrorist state spot on this is the Faris nine or oh, nine years ago nearly a decade ago now let's look at Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan was also very, very similar. Very, very similar things. What did he used to say? He said stuff like, Israel's making a massive mistake with this monstrous child slaughtering military strategy. Someone needs to rein Netanyahu in fast. Then he wrote, what the hell is Israel doing? Their third UN school in Gaza showed, shameful, shameful. A war crime. RT, Dara UNICEF, at least 408 Palestinian children killed as a result of airstrikes and shelling. So it wasn't a ceasefire, more of a mutual reload, predictable and depressing. Where is the leadership to stop this insanity? At what point does Israel, Israel's current military strategy become the very terrorism it possesses to be fighting? This was both in 2014. When I saw this, I thought, oh my gosh, did Piers change his mind about things? And I realized it's the old Piers. So is it the old Faris. Why is it that now, which I'm going to show you guys a video, where Faris is outright claiming and proud of saying that he works for the government. And there's nothing wrong working for the government. But the point is this, you can work for a government. That, no, that's not a problem. It doesn't make you complicit of the good or the bad the, the, the government do in that matter. But for you to have a problem where you cannot even say anything good about Palestine, you attack or indirectly attack Hamas, and not only that, you have it so difficult to come out like you did in 2014 and to claim or even say that Israel is a terrorist state. Why? The question is, why? Now, the head of Hamas made a call 
to the Jordanians or something along those lines that you guys had to sleep in giant. So the Jordanians came to the streets, yes? Um, they came to the streets um, just, you know, in protest or whatever, yeah? Somebody posted this. Check this out. This is from today's protest in Jordan. Many, may, may, many of these signs are filled with curses towards the Arab leaders. Okay, it's, it's the Arab Spring all over again. If Jordanians don't crush these bugs, it will go down. May Allah protect Jordan, may Allah protect the king. No problem. And this was liked by who? Faris Hamadi. Not only that, of course you have extreme on the other side, which uh, there's an individual who's wrote here that, yeah? He says, if you find that scholars frequently visit the house of the rulers, if you see a scholar sitting, clapping for the ruler, then tell him, oh scholar, they've turned you into a pillar, pillar on whilst they rest the burden of their oppression. Yes, this was shared by somebody. Now this person is wrong, because if I'm not mistaken, is Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan uh, sitting on the right, yeah? So this person was saying this. Guess what happens? You have an individual, for some odd reason, if Faris Hamari is just working for the government, like he said in the video, that he's just, you know, somebody who does, you know, helps people have addiction, etc., and he works for the Dawa Center, if it's just pertaining to that, then why is it that if you just work for the government body, what's wrong with you speaking out against what Israel's doing? I'm sure there are many people who live in the UAE who speak out against the atrocities that's being done. I don't think anyone's going to lock them up. They do speak about it. So what's stopping you? At what level are you working with the government? Yes, are you somebody who would go and go to the, uh, go to the government officials, call the police on the believers? Yes, brothers, they do. They are known to go to the authorities over this matter. Now, here is something where somebody's for some odd reason, going to Faris Hamadi out of everybody and saying what? Mr. Faris, this is the Sururian Suri Foreign Ministry. It talks about the rulers and follows the foreign ministry. Ahmed Musa Jibril and even includes his position in this account. If, it is re if, if I report it to the UAE authorities, will they be able to obtain it? It is necessary to expel from... It is necessary to be expelled from this noble country. God bless you. Why are they finding the need to go to Faris? Is he an authority? What connections does he have to the government? What is it that they have to go and ask him? And in a nutshell, what they're saying is they are literally going to rat grass, snitch on another believer. This person can be easily advised. This person can be spoken to, to go and snitch. These individuals have caused the people that I've known who have been banned from Saudi and been banned from certain UAE countries. Why? Because they go and they snitch on these Muslims. They lie about them. They snitch on them. So the question is what, in a nutshell? The question is not what, brothers and sisters. The following. Piers Morgan, his matter is clear. He's a disbeliever. Yes? He changed his position, probably got paid well, or his bosses at the top showed him to shut up. He's a disbeliever. Nobody's surprised about him. The question is the following. How is Faris so casually coming and telling us, oh, but don't boycott. <laughs> casually smirking and laughing about Starbucks matters. And here, he's seen that he is clearly being, people are coming to him, um, asking him for advice about reporting other Muslims to the authorities. Yes? And not only that, he's making dua against a group of Jordanians coming out in support of Palestinians. Yes? Some of them may have held some signs or whatever it's for that matter. But that is the point here. We need to ask ourselves a question. This man needs to be warned against. We should not fall for the same thing of just somebody looks smirky, you know, miskeen, nice voice, tone, white beard. Don't fall for it. I'm not saying he's a very evil person, but there's a big question mark on him. And you need to be careful and do not take from him because he said things which are very, very, very questionable. For them to be sitting with the rulers does not necessarily mean they are licking their backside or licking their boots. I'm so sorry, I don't buy that. That's not wrong. That is wrong. They could be advising them. They could be sincerely advising them. There might be other things that are in place that is stopping them. You cannot outright make them as bootlickers or, oh, they are totally disregarded. No, I don't believe that either. I don't go to the other extreme, yeah? We have to understand that these rulers, yes, there are some that speak against it. For those that don't, does not mean they are sellouts. They do it for the money. You do not know. This is slander. We do not know that unless there is clear evidence. I don't believe in a rebellion. I don't believe that they should rebel against the ruler. But nor do I say those who speak out against the ruler. Yes, depends. No one's talking about protests and coming out and uh, doing a revolution. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who sp speak against it and talks about the evil that they do, etc. That does not make them a khawarij. That doesn't make them a khariji. Okay. Um, and the point is what? I believe that there is more harm than good to come if you rule... If you go against the ruler, I understand that. There is whole, there's, a, there's a whole understanding effect behind it. I'm not going to the nitty gritty. I know that I believe there's more harm than good when you rebel against the ruler. But neither do I go to the other extreme of yeah, anything that they say. It's as if you worship them. No, 
and in matters where it's clear cut stuff pertaining to shirk. That's all I want to say. May Allah guide him and myself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.